Welcome back. You're watching 1700. And up now, we are joined by Damaged Goods Club. They're the latest pop rock band on the Melbourne scene, known for their overflowing energy, fun and self-deprecating humour. Lead singer Kelsey formed Damaged Goods Club after what started as a solo passion project where she sought to create music that is vulnerable in a relatable way. The brand's latest single, Love You Forever, marks an exciting evolution for the band, revealing a heavier pop punk sound with raw storytelling while staying true to their band's gritty yet glittery pop rock sound. Since forming as a band in early 2021, Damaged Goods Clubs have performed at a wide range of iconic venues across Melbourne, featuring alongside various Aussie bands, including Dear Seattle, uh, Baker's Eddie, Wax Flower and Moaning Lisa. Kelsey and Darcy, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us on. No, it's our pleasure, guys. So your new single is described as a new direction for your band as an emotional pop, pop punk ballad. What has influenced the shift in sound? Um, well, Darcy and I both listen to a lot of pop punk music. Yeah. It's pretty much uh, the main the main genre that we listen yeah. to. So uh, just through listening to a lot of music, especially music together, we both started writing in a more pop punk direction. And um, yeah, the song just kind of came out. I think because the project is still in like such an early stage where sort of still experimenting with different sounds and you know having a look at what's what's yeah. fun to play and that sort of pop punk sound is something that we really like and you know while it's something we're doing for this song you know it might be completely different for the next mm. yeah so you're still kind of experimenting and transitioning between different definitely. sounds definitely i think cool. yeah as well because we both come from very m different musical yeah. backgrounds like i come from a folky singer songwriter background and darcy comes from like a straight skate punk background um so i think like we're still kind of figuring out where we sit on that barometer between those two things, which can be really fun because you can create some really unique sounding music. I'm sure. And especially as you as mentioned, you kind of started in early 2001, so kind of peak lockdown. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm sure you had time. Was there a lot of that time where you kind of experimented and researched and different sounds from different backgrounds to kind of create yeah. your own fusion? Well, I mean, like 90% of the time, all I was doing was listening to music yeah. because like it was the only way to kind yeah. of escape. Yeah. And through that time, I discovered a lot of new music that really inspired me, um, which is, yeah, where like our first single that we released came from. Um, and yeah. A lot of the time, like, cause there was, you know, you had to do something to break up the monotony of work from home. Yeah. then oh it's the weekend what do we do so we'd a lot of the times you know make a couple of cocktails sit on the back porch and Kelsey would be like oh listen to this song that I found today or like I'd be like oh check out this song I found today mm -hmm. and then we'd sort of pick up an acoustic guitar and yeah a lot of the songs that we have in our set now were formed in that that balcony time yeah which we wrote like a lot of the songs together in Amazing. yeah it's it's been a fun ride so far fun journey so yeah. far yeah <laughs> so you obviously you guys mentioned you wrote your brand new single that's going to be released very very soon love you forever as the diary entry between two people in a breakup can you tell us a little bit more about this and kind of the songwriting behind this new hit? sure well do you want to um, oh yeah the well part of the story? so again like let's not dwell on lockdown too much but <laughs> so it started in lockdown yeah. and uh a friend of mine was messaging me and i i said to her oh i miss you right now but i'll love you forever because you know obviously Ooh, we couldn't see yeah. each other and she said oh that's great i'm gonna steal that for a poem i'm like not if i steal it for a song first <laughs> you claimed it so <laughs> Yeah, then we just started writing Yeah, and the then song. that very day we were sitting on the balcony having a few beers or whatever we were doing and we just wrote, we built this song around it and yeah, what started out as kind of a song of longing for our friends and not being able to see the people we were close to, it kind of evolved into, um, into more of a, a back and forth between a couple mm. breaking up who it might, no, it might be the wrong thing, but it's just... Sorry, it isn't the wrong thing, but it's the wrong timing. Yeah, right thing, wrong time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that old thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that what's great with that message is that it does transition with multiple relationships. It's not just definitely. Kind of Was that kind of the idea a little bit behind the song? As yeah, well? I mean, uh, it, a lot of the time Darcy and I find when we write, we don't know what a song's going to be about until no. it falls out. So, right. like, we kind of wrote this song and then we on the re-listen we were kind of like I think we wrote this about our breakup yeah. um and so we looked back at it and I'm like that verse is from your perspective that verse is from my perspective wow. we kind of had no idea that that's what we'd done but uh but yeah it kind of like you said it, it it's relatable for lots of different people in lots of different kinds of relationships platonic or not uh and regardless like we said it's a song about longing and it's a song about not being able to let go of something in general whether mm. that's romantic or not 
Yeah, amazing. And so your single kind of tends to have upbeat, catchy sound with like obviously like heavier, angsty, mess, like really emotional messages within the lyrics. Mm -hmm. What is the intention with this gritty yet glittery contrast? I guess it's to not bum people out too much. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. I mean, it's, it's us, glitter and grit. Yeah, like. I love it. <laughs> no, but I think I think it's just about showing, like, mul creating multifaceted music because yeah. I I love emo music. I love writing about my emotions. I have a lot a lot about me that's quite you know sad for want of a better term. <laughs> However, yeah, I also am bubbly and I like to have fun and whatever else. And I think it's just, it's about delivering a really heavy message in a way that's um, easy for people to consume. It'd be too much of a bummer to just go, I'm sad, I'm sad, I'm sad, <laughs> and just play minor chords the it's whole way. Like, I'm sad, I'm sad, I'm sad. Yeah, way, way more fun. <laughs> way more fun. What a fun vibe. Um, so with that, obviously, your brand new single and the production elements, how did that all come together? Like, did you have any specific like intentions or certain... I guess, production or instruments that you wanted to use and the mm. reasoning behind that? Well, when we went into the studio, we were, honestly weren't really sure what we were going to come out with. Um, we went in with a pretty, a pretty basic demo and then um, John Grace, who we recorded with mm -hmm. at Marigold Studios, he helped us kind of like produce it into what it is. Hands are genius. Mm. We, are, we took a lot of um, inspiration from Teenage Jones for this yeah, song. Yeah, cool. And... Um, yeah, and a couple of other couple of other pop was, punk bands. Yeah, and a lot of emo. But we essentially just wanted it to sound pop punk and emo. That was pretty much it. Amazing. And I think I think we achieved that. So hey, Kelsey, what's the most enjoyable part of being in a band compared to when you were in your previous solo artist experience? It's just so much more energy on stage. Mm -hmm. Like uh, as much as I love performing solo, it's it's all on you. All the pressure is on you. Yeah. And uh, when you're up there with four or five other people, you can kind of share share the pressure a little bit, yeah. but also like you feed off their energy. Um, and yeah, if they're, for example, if you're up there by yourself and the crowd isn't loving it or isn't saying anything or isn't doing anything, it's hard to kind of like, yeah, immerse yourself in that yeah. energy. Whereas if there's four other boys jumping around everywhere <laughs> on stage, it's like, you, I kind of get in my zone. It can be a little bit more dangerous though. There Definitely. was a incident uh, at a recent show where I got a bit, uh, bit overexcited with my guitar swing oh. and bang Smacked right into oh you're joking yeah right in, the, in the middle of a high note too and uh luckily i kept i kept going through it but they definitely got to that's be careful. commitment to the high was, note. it was the you worst and then i'm just trying to play the rest of the show and i'm just watching this bulb on kelsey's elbow Ooh, get bigger and bigger I'm like, oh, no, but apart from the injuries at all. apart from the injuries I apart from the pain in a band yeah. band's better <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> So obviously your recent singles have been noted as like nostalgic of the early 2000s punk kind of genre. Mm -hmm. Are there any other specific genres like your band are looking to explore in the future? I think we're definitely looking to go in a more um, like contemplative emo direction. Um, I guess emo would be the undertone, I, I suppose. It's like that sort of Australian alternative rock, like mm. that sort Australian of... Australian emo is what yeah. it's called. Yeah, Aussie, you know, when we get our uh, Spotify breakdown at the end of the year, there's, you know, Midwest emo and Australian emo yeah. and mall emo. And regular emo. And so we're just trying to, like, get somewhere in the middle <laughs> of all that. flavour of yeah. emo. <laughs> yeah. But not, uh, totally not, like, disregarding the our pop rock roots. Like, yeah. there'll definitely be an element of that. Um, but we definitely want to explore a more vulnerable side of our yeah. sound, I think. Cool. Mm. Um, so you, obviously you guys have toured with some pretty iconic Australian artists already, which is pretty amazing. And obviously you guys have an upcoming tour with Eat Your Heart Out on the East Coast. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we're very excited about it to begin with. Uh, yeah, so as you said, we toured with Dear Seattle uh, earlier this year, which was absolutely amazing. How was that this year? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> time, time flies. Um, and yeah, and we thought, you know, one one tour for the year. That's yeah. surely that's it. Surely we've like. And then maybe the week before the offer for this tour came through, I said to Carl, "I'm like, oh, just be good to go on one more tour before the year's out. If we could just get one more, yeah. that'd be and sick." And I was and then... like, Darcy, that's unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, uh, get an get an offer for me, your heart out, which is super super exciting. They're very much like in wow. the the pop pop punk vein yeah. that where kind of this new single is that going new in album of theirs is phenomenal. and the new album is absolutely amazing and also another um, female fronted pop punk band which yeah. is really exciting so where we can't wait uh we are, it's our first time going on an interstate tour so first time i've ever been to sydney flat out so, so lots I'm, of lots of firsts it'll be, that's amazing <laughs> you'll love sydney it's just very expensive <laughs> oh that's we already problem. know yeah <laughs> 
but we're in the music we're in the music industry for the love of it, not for the money. Well, so exactly. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine then. Are you like obviously it's quite so much fun touring with these bands. Are you heavily inspired by these different bands, and also from that, are you able to kind of grasp different moments to create your own sound? And one hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. It's so funny. I actually have a story about that. Like the the week we got offered the Dear Seattle tour, it might have actually been the day that we got offered to go on the Dear Seattle tour. I wrote. Um, I wrote this song which is going to be like one of our upcoming singles yeah. um, and it was just because I felt so inspired by the situation but also inspired by their music and when you listen to that song you can hear the influences like the Dear Seattle influences in it um, but yeah like we are constantly influenced by the amazing bands that we play with we're so lucky to to be involved with so many amazing artists Especially in Melbourne right now, there are just there's so many phenomenal bands. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everyone, pretty much everyone that we've played with so far has just been incredible. Yeah. and it's like we, you take away just a little something from everyone. I think you cross paths with when doing music. Yeah, absolutely. And every time I see a new band live, it kind of it uh, adds like a new facet to like what I want to add to yeah. our sound as well. It's like yeah. a through immersion yeah. experience. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Osmosis. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. So, what's your favorite part of like performing live? Tough question. <laughs> so many good parts. I like when the people go. <laughs> That's a good bonus. And yeah, cheer and sure. things like that. Yeah. I think for me, it's just like seeing people feel what I'm feeling. Yeah. Like being up there and like feeling so happy and so like immersed in this energy and you look to the crowd and they're feeling the exact same way. It's like a very mm -hmm. special experience yeah. knowing that you can evoke such a... Um, I guess like an instinctive reaction in another human being and such an emotional reaction. We've, we've had a handful of times where people have come up to us and said like, this song made me cry. And it's just wow. insane that something that you wrote could have that much uh, influence or impact on someone Absolutely. and affect them that far emotionally. Yeah. It's just insane. Exactly. Thanks to that guy that told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys. Thanks guys. A little quick chat up. Um, do you guys have like a dream venue you want to perform in? Uh, I mean... In Melbourne? Uh, yeah. Worldwide. It, let's start off with Melbourne. Melbourne. I'd, I'd love to play the corner. I haven't played the corner yeah. yet. Kelsey's done that. I'd love to play at Rod Laver <laughs> Arena. <laughs> As you would. Like, that's amazing. Well, yeah. I'm just like, you know, if we're talking dreams, like, that's 100% it. I'd like yeah. to play Marvel. As you do. <laughs> um, that's footy, though. Something I, cool, though. We got to play the Croxton. Like, that was one of our dream venues before yeah. we played it and we like when we got the opportunity to play that room it was that absolutely was amazing it's bigger than it was house. huge and the stage was massive yeah and the very next night we played at suki lounge which the stage was maybe like a quarter of the size <laughs> of the croxton and it was um it was an interesting transition for sure, sure. <laughs> amazing so favorite artists at the moment series afi <laughs> done top three things you must have at a performance a beer mates my guitar Done. That's three. <laughs> Favorite music genre apart from your own? Emo. Oh, is Skate that... punk. No, actually, folk. 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 Yeah. Top tips for young musicians who want to enter the industry? Play in front of the mirror. Ooh, that's a good one. Just keep trying. Don't give up. I know that sounds so lame, but like when you think that no one likes what you're doing, just like keep doing it. Just keep don't doing you... it because you might be just about to hit it and yeah. then you give up. So just don't give up. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Favorite memory as a band? Uh, the Croxton Show. The Croxton Show. Agreed. Who came up with a band name? Kelsey. Me. <laughs> yeah, me. I claim me. <laughs> Amazing. So where can we find you on your social media? Uh, so we're all over the socials. So we're on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Damage Goods Club across Everything. all of those. So go um, out, follow us on um, all of our socials. Yeah, and we'll leave uh, parent-style comments on all your pictures. <laughs> we promise. And don't forget to go to Spotify as well. Yes. Please. Um, please. We beg you. I beg you. Come on. <laughs> I need the streams. We need those two cents per year. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for chatting with us today.